I'm Kim Stafford, and I'm here again with PIMCO Group CIO Dan Iveson to give you an inside look at some of the recent discussions taking place within PIMCO's Investment Committee, or IC. Thank you for joining us, Dan. Thanks, Kim. Recent data paint a surprisingly resilient economic picture. Can you share our outlook for interest rates in the global economy and what risks we're monitoring? Sure. So the bottom line is that the markets have been romancing uh, a no landing scenario or a soft landing scenario. We think that's increasingly embedded in the pricing of risk assets. And given some pretty significant geopolitical uncertainty, uh, the fact that there's been a lot of tightening that's occurred thus far, um, that monetary policy operates with considerable lags, uh, we don't think we're out of the woods yet. We still think that there's at least a chance, uh, maybe a decent chance still, uh, of ultimately a recession or some period of weakness uh, in order to get inflation back down, you know, very, very close to central bank targets or perhaps even at um, central bank targets. How should investors think about the trade-off between stocks and bonds given the economic outlook you just described? Yes, yeah, so you're absolutely right. You know, stocks um, in, in other um, of the riskier areas of the investment opportunity set have performed very well the last few months. But when we look at the stock market today, um, we see um, you know, pretty high multiples, uh, a pretty low equity risk premium uh, in a historical context in this macro uncertainty. Uh, we do think that there's um, a bit better value within the fixed income markets even some of the credit markets. Stocks have been doing well more recently while interest rates across much of the yield curve um, have gone higher or bond prices have gone lower. So that relative value proposition between bonds and stocks has only gotten more attractive. So we think, again, given this uncertainty, not only can you get attractive relative returns in fixed income, but much more predictable returns as well. We think you're looking at the ability to put together a high quality bond portfolio you know, with a yield of 7% or so, with a two-year Treasury yield pretty close to 5%, and lower risk spread assets offering incremental yield pickup of 1.5% or even 2%, above that very high quality Treasury yield. So we do think that that makes a lot of sense uh, within the public opportunity set to think about fixed income, even for investors that have typically had very, very high allocations to equities. Uh, we think that there's lots of opportunities um, to generate uh, equity-like returns if you're willing to take even more risk within your fixed income allocation. So given that very positive backdrop for bonds, how are we positioning bond portfolios today? And when might investors um, expect us to increase our interest rate risk or duration positioning? Sure. So duration is just you know the, the sensitivity to changes in interest rates across a particular investment or portfolio of investments. And you know as we've talked about for some time, uh, with yields quite elevated, uh, with the curve inverted, meaning some of the higher yields in the marketplace are in shorter maturities, uh, investors don't have to take a lot of interest rate exposure to generate very attractive returns. So at these higher yield levels across PIMCO portfolios, we've been steadily taking our interest rate exposure higher. Uh, in more index-oriented strategies now, we're approaching more of a neutral type position. Uh, if yields go higher from here, um, and our economics views um, stay similar to what they are today, we'd consider adding more interest rate risk back uh, into portfolios. So we're rather thinking about more moderate interest rate risk and then using all the other levers that we have at our disposal in terms of the global um, opportunity set. Great. So speaking of the other levers in the global bond toolkit, what sectors do you like? Sure. So over the last you know few months, we've been um, reducing some of our exposures to the more economically sensitive areas of the market. Um, some of the more credit sensitive areas of the market. We've been diversifying into things like agency mortgage-backed securities. We've been looking to diversify some of our exposure globally, taking advantage of comparatively higher rates in certain areas of the United Kingdom. We've also been looking to diversify exposure into some of the higher quality segments of the emerging markets uh, in some of our more full discretion type strategies. And uh, we're doing that while maintaining significant liquidity. So across most PIMCO strategies relative to where we've been historically, we do have a lot of flexibility. Flexibility means opportunity to the extent that we do get into situations where other participants in the market need to raise cash and we can then take advantage of what very well may be you know, more attractive valuations in certain areas of our opportunity set. So you talked about the positive um, and attractive yields that we're seeing in bonds. Where else are we seeing opportunities in lending markets today? Uh, commercial real estate, tremendous challenges within that sector. Areas like retail or office uh, are areas that have significant secular headwinds. But there are other areas of the market with very, very strong long-term fundamentals, the multifamily space, anything residential mortgage or housing related. 
that unfortunately are dealing with a surprisingly high rate environment. And then there are things like data centers, other life science oriented investments that have tremendous secular tailwinds tied to the AI revolution, a lot of other technological innovation. Then coming back to um, some of the more liquid segments of the market, we do think that this may be the beginning of a more sustained period of outperformance in non-US segments uh, of the marketplace. The dollar's been stronger the last few weeks, but if you go back to you know the third quarter of last year when the dollar you know, peaked at least locally, we've seen signs of this outperformance, both in fixed income markets, currency markets, and even equity markets. Great, well, thank you very much, Dan. And thanks to all of you for joining us. We'll see you again next time.